Well, joining us right now is Liberal and former Deputy Prime Minister Anne McClellan. Uh, Anne, nice to see you again. Lovely to see you, Michael. So a lot to talk about. And I do want to get to the convention, but it's hard to, to, to be here, just, you know, stones throw away from Parliament Hill, uh, and not talk a little bit about what's happening with Michael Chong and the, the CSIS report that said he was being targeted uh, by Chinese security, or at least his family in Hong Kong was. Uh, and I'm wondering, from, from your perspective, as a former public safety minister, is it possible that the prime minister would not have seen that report? If his national security advisor says that the report made it all the way to that office, is it possible that the prime minister did not see it? Look, I can't comment on um, uh, the current situation, but I would say, based on my experience as Minister of Public Safety, that yes, that is possible. You receive, I did, as Minister of Public Safety every morning on my desk, a top secret dossier that dealt with threats. Um, emerging threats, uh, threats that were defined by CSIS or other intelligence gatherers as, uh, I would say, interesting pieces of information. Um, often the top three involved the Chinese. Then the next three would involve the Russians. And then after that, it was a more disparate group of uh, incidents related that they wanted me as public safety minister to be aware of. How many of those, one actually, even me as deputy prime minister and minister of public safety, actually followed up on with my department and staff um, would be a handful, right? So people do need to understand that intelligence can be snippets. It can be a line from a wiretap that somebody in some agency thought was worth extracting from that much longer wiretap. It could be a public informant uh, who thinks he or she heard something or did hear something. So I think part of what's been lost here, although people have tried to make the point, that you need to be careful when you're dealing with intelligence and uh, reporting on intelligence reports because that's not necessarily fact. And I would say that uh, in my experience, yes, there were things that we were told that, you know, this might have been said or we think X might be doing Y, some in the country, some outside the country. But you would, I, I've got to say that we would rarely, I think, follow up uh, on a lot of that because it was not worth following up on in that we didn't have enough information. I mean, you probably salt it away in the back of your mind and obviously your national security advisor would be focused uh, on that in uh, in certain ways and making the same decision my deputy would be making. What do we, because they talk, what do we see here that we actually need to flag and let the Prime Minister know that uh, this is uh, being said, this is a potential threat and we want you Prime Minister to know that. It's, uh, but those are decisions, as, uh, as it worked when I was in government, those are decisions uh, that are made uh, and you sift through an awful lot of intelligence and an awful lot of, uh, uh, well, uh, just information, intelligence that's been gathered. Some of it will have been gathered by the RCMP, some of it will be gathered by CSIS, some of it by the CSE, some of it by DND in most cases, at least when we were in government. Um, and that has to be put together, and you have to have a coherent story. And but people need to put everything that's been happening, I think in a context of uh, not whistleblowers and leaked documents, but put it in a context of, of uh, how intelligence is gathered, what it is and what it isn't. Okay. Well, of course, we're going to keep following the story. Now, of course. Now, now, of course, you also mentioned the Prime Minister. I want to talk about the Prime Minister's Can speech I last night. Can I just say, though, yes, I do feel, I mean, I understand. I know Michael Chong. I view Michael as a friend. And uh, I feel uh, very 
bad for him and his family. And if there was, and I do believe he had been contacted by CSIS on more than one occasion, but not specifically about potential threats to his family. If, uh, you know, th that was the case, as the Prime Minister has said, we need to get to the bottom of that and we need to make sure that he and other MPs are not subject to that kind of harassment or, and their families, wherever those families live. Uh, we uh, need to be aware that it's a different world. And I'm the first, Michael, yeah. to take on board that the world is a different world than it was 20 years ago when I was Minister of Public Safety. Yeah, again, a very concerning story. Uh, but listen, you mentioned the Prime Minister. I also want to talk a bit about the Prime Minister's speech, speech last night because he put to rest any speculation that he would be leading this party into the next election, yes. whenever that yes, may be. Uh, what do you make of that? Is he, is he still the best asset for this party? do you think? Well, I think so, and I think you probably saw why last night. Um, he's a fighter. The, the one thing that I would say uh, about the Prime Minister is that he is at his best when he is actually in a fight. And, um, you know, a, a situation where his profound beliefs about the country and the values that we have as a country are being challenged and he will fight. And what you saw last night was the Prime Minister, I think, beginning to articulate what the fight will look like. And as you can tell, this was a partisan crowd, mm -hmm. but uh, very well received, uh, and especially when he took on uh, the leader of the official opposition. And uh, I think, uh, I, I just think he is the, the best person to articulate on behalf of liberals what we believe, and I do believe the vast majority of Canadians, whether they vote liberal or not, sh though the values they share, what they want their country to be, a place of inclusion for everybody, a place where we care about the natural environment, a place where we bring people from around the world to establish new lives for themselves and, and their families, and a place where we can grow the economic pie in a way that everybody gets to share in it. So um, he, when, when he uh, feels that those things are under threat, that I think is where you see the fight that comes out in Justin Trudeau. Well, Anne McLeod, it's always really good to speak with you. Thank you for joining us today. I love talking to you whenever you're available. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you, Michael. Okay, and that is Anne McClellan, former Deputy Prime Minister, here on CPAC.